I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my creative healing course is filled with hours of exclusive content. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about becoming secure. Well, many of you guys are becoming more and more aware of your insecurities now that you're going through your breakup. You're becoming uh, more clear on issues that were going on and you're looking at yourself and taking a look at maybe behavior that pushed your partner away and also understanding your partner or your ex's insecurities as well. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about becoming secure because obviously it's where we want you all to get. And many people ask in the beginning, how do I do this? Yeah, I mean, this is why the, you know, the knowledge workbooks are focused on becoming more secure. The new creative course is all about becoming secure. You know, not necessarily about trying to get your ex back. It's gonna help anybody. I get that question a lot. Mm -hmm. Is this only to get your ex back? No. no. The, the workbooks and the course are absolutely for you to become more confident and secure, whether you're trying to get an ex back or just trying to grow and heal or get awesome in new relationships. Right. We want you to have the choice and whichever way it goes, we want you to be better off than where you were. We want to enrich your life if we can. Absolutely. Yeah. And so that's why we're always trying to educate you guys and push you guys to grow. And Margaret got a good article today that she really liked. I really like this article. Yeah. All right, the actual, I'll give you the actual title of the article. It's called The Talking Cure of Avoidant Personality Disorder. Remission through earned security. Okay. Um, okay. We've talked about earned security before, and that is that you have an insecure attachment and you're able to work through it enough to get to a much more secure place. Okay. And this was conducted by um, a psychiatrist named Jeff Jeffrey Geiner, who is psychoanalytically trained as well to be a therapist. He doesn't just do the medication, he does the therapy. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about the article, and then I'm going to tell you in a second session about um, the therapy process that he did with this woman, which mm -hmm. was just superb. Okay. Okay. And before we go into the article, I just wanted to mention, because not many people really understand this, that typically psychiatrists just prescribe the medication. They often don't do any kind of therapy, right? Right. And in the beginning, when psychotherapy was first born, the psychiatrist did it all, mm -hmm. okay? But now, managed care companies just want to pay them for the, the medication consult and other disciplines, psychologists, social workers, mental health counselors, do most of the therapy. So what's very different about this article right. is that he was a psychotherapist right. and a psychiatrist. Right. So that's why Margaret really liked it. That's why I really liked him, <laughs> okay. Thank you, Craig. Um, he starts out by saying that in many ways, um, what we're beginning to learn about attachment theory has revived psychotherapy. Um, insurance has always had a problem with psychotherapy that it takes too long. Yep. So the agenda of managed care companies and insurance companies has been to shorten the process. Mm -hmm. And they have thought that the answer to shortening the process is cognitive behavioral therapy, which teaches you coping skills and Prozac or something for your depression or anxiety. And what do you think about cognitive behavioral, Margaret? Not much. <laughs> I think it's a lovely short-term intervention. Um, and I think in some cases it's extremely useful and it can be done short-term. But for serious issues, you need more than that. Like trauma? Like trauma is Abuse. my feeling. And yeah. the, they have done their level best um, to come up with trauma curricula. Um, but I think they're too big on learning and too little on emotions. 
Okay. okay. Uh, I don't discount it in any way, but it can be like rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. <laughs> that doesn't sound like discounting it. <laughs> I'm trying not to discount it. I'm, I'm trying to be good. Maybe you could just make a little face like I did. Like, How's that? Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so he's saying that attachment theory has really rejuvenated psychotherapy because our growing knowledge um, that attachment issues respond to a talking cure mm -hmm. um, has we literally rejuvenated psychotherapy, and I think, to a large extent, we can thank our friend Susan Johnson, the Canadian professor who yep. has begun to popularize this. And Bowlby, of course. And Bowlby, who discovered attachment theory. Yeah. Right. So I agree with him, and I'm glad he mentioned it. Um, and one important contribution to attachment theory and mental health in general is the concept of earned security. If you have early damage, you can work at work at it and improve it a whole lot. Yes. It takes effort though. Yes. Doesn't magically happen. No. Even though you let go of those feelings. Earned security is defined as the process by which individuals overcome malevolent parenting experiences. Malevolent mm -hmm. meaning that your parents were really kind of mean. Okay. These people have a history of insecure attachment that changes over time. In a 23-year study, believe it or not, um, it, wow. has been, it has been determined that adults, fortunately, can overcome early negative experiences with caregivers and the resulting psychopathology by developing an earned, secure attachment style. Subsequent positive relationships, including psychotherapy, can rework early attachment relationships, changing attachment style from insecure to earned secure. Okay? Yep. So it wasn't given, given to you in the beginning. You have to go out and work to get it. The person working to attain earned security must be able to perform four tasks. And I'm going to describe them. Okay, four the, tasks. Four tasks. The first is coherence, the second collaboration, the third mentalization, and the fourth reflection. Now okay. I'm going to describe those four things. Interesting. We yes. haven't talked about those terms before. No, I love this article. Okay. Okay. Margaret doesn't say that very no, often. No, I don't. Um, I read it with, I was spellbound reading the case study. <laughs> All right. Coherence. People must take the time and effort to chronologically and coherently describe their negative childhood experiences. Okay? Everybody and their cousin is now recommending that people need to establish a narrative of what growing up was like in great detail. And that's what we did in the story of our life activity. Absolutely. That's in the new creative Absolutely. course. Absolutely. But it's amazing to yeah. see now that many people from different uh, disciplines are coming to the same conclusion that that is exactly what you have to do. But that's great to hear. Yeah, is that you know that we're on the right path of Absolutely. what a twenty-three year old or research study is showing? Absolutely. Yeah. Now Daniel Siegel, PhD, who is one of the most popular psychologists in the country, mm -hmm. concludes that it's not the magnitude of what happened to you that determines your future; it's how you make sense of it. Okay, so God knows what may have happened to you. Yeah. But if you can tell the story and begin to understand what happened, you don't have to like it, but if you can begin to understand it, that that will absolutely affect your future. Mm -hmm. All right? And these are people coming from very different places. Um, this is not an easy task. It requires one to go back and recall difficult and painful experiences with their families. Yeah. Oftentimes, these people have been instructed by the family to keep secrets. And they hear phrases like, don't expose the family's dirty laundry to the outside. I've heard that, that phrase a thousand times. Yeah. So oftentimes, it's made more difficult because these people come from families who have to keep secrets. Okay. It can also feel disloyal to your family to talk about the reality of what actually went on in your house. Yeah. Right? 
is you have to say that your parents were imperfect. And there were degrees of imperfect. And they feel course. perfect in many ways when you're growing up. Absolutely. And we have to see them as perfect no matter what they do to maintain our connection with them. Okay? It's a very difficult thing to do. Yeah. Um, however, you have a right to your mental health. And if it involves doing this, then you simply have to do it. Yep. Uh, there are also people who cannot recall their childhood very clearly. And I hear that pretty often, too. Usually, however, if they can write down what they do remember mm -hmm. and identify where the gaps are, then oftentimes memories will start to come back. Okay? Um, so try it before you give up. I've heard people say, oh, I just don't remember anything prior to the age of 12. Well, write down what you've heard about what you were like. And, you know, maybe you remember something from one of the grades of school or a teacher or a friend or a birthday party. Um, drawing, a house of the pic uh, drawing a picture of the house that you lived in can help jog your memories. Mm -hmm. There are ways of working on it. Okay? Yeah. So it may be difficult, but it's not impossible. Mary Maine herself, who worked with Dr. Baldry. Baldry yeah. We've talked about her before. Mary Maine herself, who worked with Dr. Bowlby described earned security as speaking coherently and collaboratively about one's history. Okay, so okay. you don't get better than Mary Main if you worked with Dr. Bowlby. What do we mean by collaboration? Okay. Collaboration is an important characteristic of secure attachment, including the ability to value relationships and positive communications. Okay. okay? As long as you're willing to talk to people, you can collaborate. One also needs to be willing to share their narrative with others whom they consider to be trustworthy. So the first thing is to begin to write your life story and begin to look at it, and the other is to be willing to share it with someone. Wow. Okay. It made me think of... Not that. your ex. Not your, no, not your ex. <laughs> we don't no, want you to no. get the wrong idea. No, we're going to get I shared eventually. them the life story that you told us to do, Craig, and then they... <laughs> and then they no, left to another no, province. No, we didn't yeah. tell you to do that. Right. Uh, but I was thinking of um, some of the things that they do in AA and NA and the other A's, which is to say that you really have to recount the story to yourself, get it down on paper if you can, and at least one other human being. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's collaboration, being willing to talk about it. Mentalization. Okay. Is the ability to theorize about the mental state of oneself and others. And I have often said to people, what do you think is going on with him or her? Mm -hmm. They just have no idea how to answer. Okay, what would you speculate is happening with him or her? Yeah. Um, this includes thoughts, feelings, intentions, and explanations for behaviors. Okay, yeah, so sure. you have to be able to look at yourself and others and say, so what's going on with this person? And I think that's probably a big thing that you and I do when yes, we're on our course. coaching. Yes, yeah? sure. Um, yeah, we're intellectually trying to, yeah. So mentalization, in other words, using your brain to figure out what's going on with you and everybody else. Yeah. Okay? And reflection. Reflection includes the ability to look at different aspects of experience. When talking about child abuse, it would mean thoughts, feelings, contexts, and meanings of what went on. So in other words, you're not going to tell the story like a robot, although sometimes you need to do it that way in the beginning. But eventually, the point of recounting your story is to begin to look at the different aspects of it. What were your thoughts, your feelings, the con context where it occurred, and what the meaning of what went on was for you. Mm. Okay? Yeah. So it sounds like a lot of words, but it works. You have to tell a coherent story. You have to be willing to share it. You have to be able to figure out yourself and others, at least to some extent, mm -hmm. and you have to be able to reflect on all of it. Sure. And, you know, Margaret, if you think about it, like part of me and you exploring breakups and what happened yeah. and, you know, as you helped me look right. at my own family life and stuff like that, we were able to understand like, you know, like for me personally, like I looked at why did my parents split up? Why did my dad leave my mom? Why did my dad want to leave to be with another woman? And, and as an adult, being yes. able to get why it happened and not try and villainize right. 
why he may have done that right. or right. what happened my why my mom was the way she was and understanding her and him and th that's kind of been a big impact on me yes to be able to do it and so i could do it for other people it's part of making sense of it yeah you know and certainly they encourage us as therapists to do the best we can to understand ourselves since we're going to ask others to do that it's the least we can do but yeah. that's probably why i'm so you know driven to understand what happens in yeah. you guys situations is right. because when I that impacted me from you know when I was not even two years old, right? Exactly, and and so exactly. I made yeah. it my mission to understand why don't relationships work? Right. What happens that right. they fall apart when people have the best intentions? Yep. And now you know we take such a deep look at to why why this happens. Yep. What was going on with them, which is not easy to do. No, it's not. And I think sometimes people give give up on getting answers when it is still possible to get them. Uh, yep. Or at least better understandings, not all the answers. But, yep. Okay. But it does take work. So I'll leave it here for this one, and in the next one, I will talk about the case study. Okay, and it's going to be good because Margaret's excited about it. Yes, I am. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> so you know it's got to be a good one. Okay, so if you want to get our help personally, just go to my website, askcraig.net, sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Margaret, of course, is available for Skype coaching. If you feel that I can be helpful, please sign up. Just click on Margaret on the top of the website to do that. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon.